Hey everybody. Today we're talking about box plots, also known as box and whisker plots. A box plot is yet another way of displaying a single variable data set. This one is based on the five number summary. The easiest way to understand them is just to do an example or two. So let's jump right in. Here we want to construct a five number summary and a box plot for this data set. Here's the five number summary. Obviously the min is 34 and the max is 58. I've already got the numbers um, arranged from lowest to highest, so the median is the one in the middle. Here we have an odd number of values. There literally is one in the middle, 48. Crossing out that value, we get a top half and a bottom half to the data. And we take the medians of those two halves to get the quartiles. The median of the smaller half of the data here is 42, and the median of the larger half of the data here is 51.5. Here's the box plot based on that five number summary. The bottom of the box is at Q1, the top of the box is at Q3, and I've added a horizontal line in the middle of the box at the median. Then the arms extend away from the box to the minimum and maximum. The point here is that we can then conceptualize the area inside of that box as covering the middle 50% of this data set, and from the bottom arm to the top arm as encompassing the rest of the data. So between those, um, the bottom of the bottom arm and the top of the top arm, we have the full range of the data set. Typically, box plots display outliers separately, as in this next example. By the way, that first example did not have any um, extreme values, and so it was not an issue when we graphed it there. Here, we want to give a five number summary for this data set. We want to test for outliers using the 1.5 times IQR test, and then construct a box plot. Here's the five number summary, 62, 64, 75, 81.5, and 110. The IQR is Q3 minus Q1, in this case, 17.5. We then take one and a half of those IQRs and subtract from Q1, so 64 minus 1.5 times 17.5, and get 37.5. And then we add that same amount to Q3, Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. And in this case, we get 107.75. Values that lie outside of that range that are less than 37.75 or more than 107.75 should be considered outliers by this test. In this case, 110 should be considered an outlier. Let's go ahead and construct a box plot for this data. The idea is that when you have an outlier, the arms of the box plot should extend only to the most extreme values that are not outliers. The outliers themselves are just gonna get labeled with individual points. So here's the box plot in this case. The outlier of 110 has its own dot, and the arm on top extends only up to 90. The point here is that uh, if we had that arm go all the way up to 110, that would be slightly misleading. It might make it look like um, the top half of the data really was spread out um, between the median and that top dot, when in reality it's almost all um, just going up to 90 in this case. Box plots are particularly useful when comparing data between groups. That is, when plotting one categorical and one quantitative variable. Sometimes this gets called a side-by-side -side box plot. Here's an example um, using the famous IRIS data set. What we have here are 50 observations of each of three species of iris. And here I've plotted the width of the petals um, of each of those flowers. The three species are Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Looking at this plot, we can immediately see that the Setosas um, tend to have um, less wide petals than the other two species. In fact, every petal from the Setosa variety in this set was, short, was less wide than every petal in either of the other two groups. We can also see, for example, that there was less spread among the widths of petals in the Setosa group. 